You know, the reality of the magic business is that the vast majority of magicians make the major part of their income performing for children and for family audiences. And they need lots of fresh, fun and flexible material. And that's what you'll find in here. Routines for Rascals. Welcome to Magic Coach and another of our Inside Peaks. Hi, welcome. It's Timothy Hyde here from Magic Coach and another of our Inside Peaks. And this time we're looking at Routines for Rascals, our book for children's and family entertainers. It might surprise you, knowing what I do now, which is mainly corporate work and a few cruise ships, that for years and years, children's entertainment was our thing. Just like you, we did children's parties, school shows, kindergarten shows, shopping centre tours for Warner Brothers, and then we got into theme parks and, and worked for Sega World, Legoland, and we had a two-year contract at Australia's Wonderland, which was the largest theme park in the Southern Hemisphere. And we've also produced um, school holiday shows ourselves at uh, Sydney's famous Bondi Beach Pavilion Theatre for two years. So the routines in the book all come from that time and they're fully illustrated. There's five routines, there's 40 pages in the book. You can purchase it from our site or you can go to library.com. So let's have a look and see what those routines are all about. Okay, the first routine in the book is called the Snake Can Lottery and it's based on ideas from two of my friends. Uh, Larry Becker and Richard Webster over in New Zealand. And it fills the stage with human props. This is a concept I learned from Roy Johnson in one of his lectures. And it uses these snake cans. You can get these at um, magic shops or, or even gag shops. And, and uh, I use five, but you can use as many as you like. And it gives people a chance to win some money. It's loads of fun, lots of hilarity, of course as the snakes go off. So um, we give you several different variations on the routine and uh, I can guarantee lots of fun fills the stage up and uh, that's Snake Can Lottery. Just notice there's a little card at the bottom of that can. Now that's a thought, isn't it? Oh, it doesn't come out. Great for a card in impossible location. I think you know where I'm going there. So that's a little extra tip that you can use. Snake Can Lottery, The Magic Squirter. This is the first of two routines that aren't strictly magic, but they are very strong performance pieces and they per fit perfectly into any show structure. It's perfect for stage, for cabaret, for parties, and especially roving performance at great big events. I'm really proud of this routine. It comes from a tradition of, of storytelling and make-believe and clowning in the, in the real sense and commedia dell'arte. And it blurs the lines a little bit about performance and what's real and what's not. But people really buy into the concept, both children and adults. And this squirter, and you can use anything you like. You can use a, an atomizer or a paintbrush or anything. But I tend to like the, the squirter. This squirter has the power to make a person older, to make a person taller, and to make a person wiser. And at the age of six years old, what more could you possibly want? The Magic Squirter. Read about it in the book. The next routine is called Funky Hip Hop. I bet if you surveyed 100 children's performers that 95% of them would have these, either in their show or at least in their magic storeroom. Norman Hazeldean's Elusive Rabbits have developed into many forms over the years and been marketed by different people. Uh, the Hippity Hop Rabbits and then the designs got changed a little bit. It is a very strong routine. No wonder a lot of magicians perform it. Um, it's got a very strong structure. It's got a surefire method and Great gags are built into the into the routine and it always goes down well. But there's two downsides that I can see to it. One, if you use the prop as bought from the magic shop, people know it and they recognize it straight away. 
and uh, they will tell you, the kids will tell you, I've seen it before. And the other thing, and this is the strong one, the ending can be spoiled. If people have seen it previously and they came to the show before and they see it again, they can call out what is on the other side. And this kind of ruins it or deflates the, the ending in a lot of ways. We developed a variation that totally eliminates it totally eliminates the spoiler factor. Even if children have seen it before and call out what's on the other side, it doesn't matter. Okay? There's a, scent, a dual reality going on, but it doesn't matter. The trick is a lot stronger. And I've also explained in, in the article how we soften the sucker effect of it, which uh, I quite like. So it's I'm surprised as much as they are about what's on the other side. I know this is strong. I performed this on a national television show many, many years ago. And the next magic convention I went to, several magicians who will remain nameless came up to me and said, Timothy, I love that routine. I, ch I repainted my rabbits immediately just to match yours. So I hope they're going to buy the book. <laughs> The last thing we, we do in the article is I explain how you can apply the thinking that we used on the rabbits to other store-bought props just to make them a little bit different. I love this routine. You will too. It's called Funky Hip Hops. See ya. The next routine is called Houdini's Magic Jacket. And it's another big stage-filling routine. And it works on the grandmother's necklace principle, which has been in every magic book, I believe, since the discovery of witchcraft and it's in Mark Wilson and the Tar Bell series and my routine was inspired by the great English street performer Percy Press and if you've never heard of Percy Press you should look him up and he used to tie a child up into the jacket at the end of his show when he was collecting money the child would be there all tied up and he would go around collecting money and then he would release the child so it was, it was a nice gimmick to to bottle the crowd but I switched this around so that I got tied up in the jacket with two children pulling on the ropes. I'll give you the whole routine, a whole lot of gags that are built in, and I'll also show you a handling that I developed for the ropes so that they can be kind of examined in their normal state, and then you can very quickly, one-handed, switch the configuration of the ropes around that you need to do. So that's fully explained in the book as well. And the other thing that I explain is several emergency procedures if the gimmick fails. And sometimes the gimmick, well, the more you do it, the chances increase that it will fail. So I think there's three different uh, techniques that you can use if that is the case. I give you some ways to expand the routine um, with other helpers up on stage as well. It really plays big and it's great for street performance, uh, for roving type of things, for busking or for big family shows and stage shows. Houdini's Magic Jacket, very strong routine. The last routine in the book is called The Kids Cabaret and this really is a forgotten gem for children's and especially family shows and if you get anything out of the book I, I think this is the one that you're going to say, wow, this is great. And I, I learned it from Sydney professional magician Rod Juna. And Rod was a great help to me when I arrived in Australia. And uh, so new country, new, new city, and he helped me set up. And so a big shout out to Rod if he ever watches this. We've never been able to establish exactly where this routine came from. It's possibly a, a Val Andrews routine, possibly an early Supreme. If you know, please tell us. We changed it substantially from what Rod had taught us and I know that he had changed it quite a lot himself but still got the same powerful kicker at the end. Now there's no trick here but what it does is it fills the stage with people who have a lot of fun and the audience have a lot of fun watching them and it always ends with a thunderous round of applause um, and cheering and shouting and that's guaranteed it's built into the routine and which is great especially if other people aren't perhaps watching the show and they say oh what's going on over there it's a talent quest and um, it uses a whole lot of categories which we explain which ones you use for which occasions you have to make the cards up and but there's lots of different ways that you can do that these days but it has this 
powerful, cute, cute and powerful kicker built into the end of it. And it's also a terrific photo opportunity. Linda and I got some great press coverage over the years in different newspapers and they would always tend to gravitate to that photo because it had the children up plus us and it was great. So we got lots of newspaper photos of that routine. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, in fact, I know you will enjoy it. That's the kids' cabaret. So there you are, that's Routines for Rascals. Uh, five routines that you can slot instantly into your act and your performances. Uh, you can get it off our site or you can go to library.com where it's our biggest seller. So if you do family or children shows, um, I hope you will consider it. Please, if you've got any comments or suggestions about videos you'd like to see in the future, leave those comments below. Uh, and you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the like button. That would help us as well. And please visit us at Magic coach.com and if you do you can subscribe to our newsletter and or download our training pack we've got a whole bundle of things that you can get for absolutely for free so my name is timothy hyde been great to talk to you and we'll see you in the next video thank you